Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Minus Forum Stick PC. This is the S40, and this is a full Windows 10 PC on what is essentially an HDMI dongle. And we're going to be taking a closer look at what this little PC can and can't do in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Minus Forum. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it gets uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little PC is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is powered by an Intel Celeron processor, a Gemini Lake N4000 chip. Uh, we've seen this processor quite a bit over the years on mini PCs and network attached storage devices. And this is usually the type of chip that you put inside one of these little stick computers. It has four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage, and you cannot upgrade that because it's all encased inside of the device here. Uh, now, it does have an HDMI output here on the front, and what you typically do is just pop it into the back of a monitor, but given the width of this thing, it might be hard to do that. Now, they do give you a little uh, connector in the box to basically convert this male plug to a female plug, but this connector was not working for me. It was defective, so I had to find another one around the house. So I would look at maybe getting a higher quality gender changer for that HDMI uh, just to improve your chances of it working properly when you first plug it in. Now this will output 4K at 60 frames per second out of that HDMI. We tested that in Windows and it worked. And you've got some additional ports on here as well, including a display port output, which can also do 4K 60. So you can have two 4K 60 uh, displays coming out of this. You have a micro SD card slot here, which you can use to augment its limited onboard storage. You have a USB 3 port over here. On the other side, you've got another USB 3 port, what looks like a little reset button there. And then on the back, you have a Kensington lock for keeping it from walking away from you and a USB Type-C port, which is used for power. Now, earlier I did test to see if this USB-C port did anything else. It doesn't, it is strictly power. And I was a little concerned that we're not getting a lot of power going into this. It's only five volts at three amps. So it's just a little bit better than what you would normally get out of a tablet charger. So I would have liked to have seen it support uh, some of the higher power that the USB standard provides, but this one doesn't. So my recommendation would be that if you are using USB devices with this, make sure you're using a powered USB hub so that those USB devices get powered from the hub and not from the computer just to prevent power issues with it. Now this is not a fanless mini PC, and as such you need to keep the bottom here free and the top free of obstruction. So if you were to maybe place it down on a desk like this and run one of those extension cables out of the HDMI, you'll likely overheat it. So what you wanna do is figure out a way to kinda of get it angled on its side or something just to keep the airflow going. And just note that you've got vents on all sides that you really need to keep clear. So it's gonna require some bit of juggling to keep this thing running at its peak coolness. So ideally you can stick it into the back of your monitor, but if you can't, you're really gonna to have to work to make sure you keep all these vents clear. So let's take a look now and see how it performs. I hooked it up to my 4K monitor here just to have it running at its advertised maximum resolution. We're hooked up via HDMI right now. And as you can see, we're getting 60 Hertz out of this device at 4K. I did scale the display to 200% so I could actually see stuff. And of note here is that the device supports Netflix at 4K, but the hardware doesn't support HDR. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you will likely have to download the HEVC video extensions to get that DRM working properly for the 4K video here. But I did play back some Netflix a little bit earlier at 4K and it worked fine. Just note again that you're not going to get uh, the HDR out of this. And to be honest, I'm really not recommending uh, PCs anymore for home theater use, just given that a lot of the things that home theater users want, like HDR and lossless audio, often is a hit or miss thing with these little mini PCs. But there are a lot of things that it might be useful for. Now I've got it connected up to my Wi-Fi, so I figured we would uh, just go over to the NASA.gov homepage here and see how it performs. Uh, this is on my AC network 
It seems like it's doing pretty well actually for running at 4K. Uh, you will notice some sluggishness as you can see as you're going into different pages and resizing things, but overall for a cheap PC, uh, it's actually doing pretty nice here and I found the performance to be pretty consistent. So it doesn't get any worse than what you see here and by and large, it's been a pretty good browsing experience. And just remember that this is only running with four gigs of RAM, so you'll likely see things start to slow down if you've got a lot of tabs running on your browser. Now, we did try to run some 4K 60 frames per second video on this from YouTube just to see how well some of the top-end video would work. And unfortunately, as you can see here, we're getting a lot of dropped frames, and this is with the new version of Edge that's running with Chromium, which is the uh, Google open source browsing engine. Uh, as you might expect, we had similar performance, and I'll pull it up here, uh, with that same video running on Google Chrome because it is based on the same engine. Lots of drop frames running at 4K60. But check out the old version of Microsoft Edge. Uh, same video, this one is running with no drop frames and going very smoothly because the old version of Edge supported all of the hardware acceleration that these Intel chips allow for. And unfortunately, you got great performance before on Edge, but not now, just given that it doesn't appear as though the open source engine driving Edge now is going to give you the best video playback performance, at least at 4K. Now, we also installed the h 264 extension on the PC to see if that might help. Uh, we lost the ability, though, to play back 4K60 video on YouTube with that extension running, but we were able to get better performance out of 1080p60 video, which was dropping a ton of frames earlier. Now it's not dropping as many, but it's still dropping a bunch, and it's not as smooth in its playback as I would like. Now, this is at a 4K display resolution right now. When we turn the display resolution down to 1080p on the computer, the performance smoothed out quite a bit. We were dropping frames like every 30 or 45 seconds or so, but not significantly so. And it might be that really the sweet spot here is having that extension installed and running your display at 1080p versus 4K. But this really kills me because the machine is more than capable of playing back 4K video smoothly. It's just that YouTube and Chrome and all these other components here are just not working together to get the hardware acceleration moving on this device like they should be. And this has been something I've been complaining about for years now, and it just hasn't been fixed. And it's about time Google and YouTube and whoever else needs to get together to fix it, fix it, because it's been very frustrating to me and I think many others who are looking to get the most out of their lower end hardware. The good news, though, is that on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we didn't see any real issues here. Uh, that test is something we run on all of the PCs we test here on the channel, and it measures how well it can process JavaScript, the things that you encounter on the web quite frequently with Google Docs and Google Sheets and other things that run on the web. And there we got a score of 62.2 .2 on version 1.0 of that test and 36.6 .6 on version 2.0. That puts it right in line with a bunch of other computers we've looked at running with the same processor. So overall, this is performing as I would expect it to, and I'm not seeing any real performance issues with the hardware here at all. The YouTube stuff is really on YouTube to get right. So let's move on to some games now, and this is certainly not a gaming machine by any stretch, but it can run a few games pretty nicely. Uh, this is Shovel Knight, and this is the kind of game that runs pretty well on this low-end hardware, one of these retro-inspired games. Uh, some run better than others, of course, but this one is running at a solid 60 frames per second at 1080p, so no issues there. Uh, we also ran some older games on here. This is Half-Life 2, which of course came out many years ago, and there, as you can see, we're getting frame rates uh, north of 60 frames per second running at 720p. Uh, if you go up to 1080p, you're going to be in the 40 to 50 frames per second territory. But again, there's a lot of older games on Steam and other platforms that I think will do pretty well here. But newer games won't fare as well. This is Rocket League running at 720p at the lowest settings. And you occasionally get a decent run here at about 30 frames per second, give or take. But usually what we'll see occur is a big hit in performance, a little spike of lag where it'll drop into the teens basically like right there and then go right back up again afterwards so i think it's probably either due to thermal throttling or just the lack of ram on the device either way this is not an ideal gaming platform especially for newer games you're going to want to stick to the older stuff whether it's things like half-life 2 
or maybe 80s and 90s retro emulation. And this is not good for GameCube or PlayStation. Usually it's the uh, older consoles like the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis on back, along with some arcade games. And on the 3D Mark Cloudgate benchmark test, we got a score of 2,433. And that is right in line with other N4000 base machines that we've looked at here over the years. So again, performance is consistent with what we're seeing on other devices. Now, I was curious about its thermal performance given how small it is. And we ran the 3D Mark stress test for that, where it runs one of these benchmarks over and over again to see if it throttles due to heat. Uh, there we got a passing grade of 97.3%, uh, which means that we shouldn't see all that much thermal throttling, which is why I was a bit uh, uncertain as to what the cause of those lag hits were on Rocket League, given that we passed this test. Typically, we see this test come in lower when we see game performance that isn't consistent. So again, I think the thermals here are pretty good, uh, provided, though, that you're keeping everything clear here because if any one of these vents is covered up, that will likely result in additional throttling because you need to keep the airway clear for this thing to operate at its best performance. So just keep it uh, out in the open, and I think you should see some pretty consistent performance out of it. The fan noise is there. In fact, the fan is always running on this thing. Uh, it's not terribly loud. Even when it's under load, it doesn't get all that loud, but it's still going to be something audible and if you don't want any noise at all, then you might want to consider the fanless version. Now, we haven't looked at that one, so I don't know what the performance is versus this one, but I have a feeling if they're selling one with a fan and one without, the fan-based one is probably going to be more consistent in its performance versus the one that lacks the active cooling. Now, we also loaded up Ubuntu to see how well it would run Linux, and like other machines with this Intel chipset, no problems. 4K was working, although we could not get the 60 hertz to output. It was stuck at 30. Uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi worked appropriately along with audio. Uh, so overall, on the Linux side, it was a pretty good experience, minus the 60 hertz at 4K. Uh, it did do 60 at 1080p, so I'm guessing there's probably some driver that we have to find to get that 4K output. Uh, but again, it's a pretty solid little performer here for very little money. In fact, I think in many cases you can buy a Windows license for what this computer costs with its Windows license. So I think there's some good uh, reason maybe if you're looking for a fun little PC to play around with, maybe to consider this one given its low price tag. My only gripe with it, one is that it's not upgradable, but that's par for the course with these PC sticks. But beyond that, the uh, cooling here is a bit difficult to manage because if you don't want this thing hanging off the side of your monitor or can't get it hanging off the side of your monitor, uh, you do need to figure out a way to keep uh, every edge of it clear and in the open so it gets good airflow. Without that, uh, you do risk having some throttling or perhaps some overheating. Uh, the fan is there certainly, but it's not all that noisy. And if you really don't want fan noise, maybe take a look at the fanless one. Maybe we'll try to get the fanless one in and see how it performs versus this one if you're interested. But I think for the price tag, uh, this is something definitely worth checking out just because it's, again, not that expensive and fully capable as an Intel-based PC. That's going to do it for the Minus Forum PC on a Stick. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.